What about from the intro to digital film students about production? Yeah, yeah. Asked, um, Mr. LeDuc actually um, told us about it, so we got asked him to get permission from Mr. Hesh. Yeah, so what happens is, for those people in the intro to film class, if you are filming somebody or something, right, you need to make sure that you get approval. Even if it's, let's say you're in the exchange and you're filming down the street, you should really tell everyone that you're actually filming. Um, we actually, when I used to teach in Ottawa, we used to actually have to talk to the city of Ottawa to actually book areas that you were allowed filming in, and you'd have to close it off, and you'd actually have to provide a statement of purpose and your your plot summary to the city to make sure that everything's okay. Um, that's really important. I know that the other group, the um, Jerk Jar, when you went to the WAG studio, you had to get permission to actually film. They gave you conditions. But one thing you'll notice is it takes a student film to the next level. Because it's not something, like everyone in this building, they're watching a film and they go, okay, that's Sisler High School. That's, all of a sudden that doesn't look like Sisler High School. It could be anywhere. Um, same with the WAG Studio. It adds a new dynamic to your, your film. Setting is extremely important. So that statement of purpose and the plot summary, the synopsis, that's extremely important whenever you're trying to communicate with anyone to get permission. Because they'll ask you, what's your film about? You have to be able to say quickly, this is what it's about, and this is why we're doing this. So it took a while to actually get approval to, to get in there. And the You only filmed on this spot, right? Like this side? Yeah. Because I, I think originally Max and, it was just Max and Mary, the two of you came down with me? Yeah. And we walked, we did the whole track, and it goes like, starts right by the 80A downstairs in the back corner of the cafeteria and it goes all the way down and then all the way down to the theater. So it's a gigantic L shape um, and there's some really neat spots in there. It's There's like a classroom with chain, chain link fence up and um, it's a very very scary environment. Well it sort of looks like it could have been a classroom. Right? It looks like a room but they put, instead of putting drywall up they actually have a fence. You're up, you're done. There are 15 minutes. Uh, other questions? We're almost done. We just need to um, film, I think, two more scenes, which is good, so yeah. So how many hours of footage do you have at this point, would you say? Um, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. 20. Around an hour or more, or less. Or, or less. So, so you have over 60 minutes of, of yeah. raw footage, yeah. different camera angles, and your goal for your film, how long is it going to be, approximately? Around 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah. The rule of thumb is usually you're filming for one minute of edited version, kind of like a clip, looking at around 30 minutes of raw footage. So a different angle, different shot, changing it up. Is it very hard to um, like bring down uh, that, that many hours of space to that much space, uh, time? Well, Jason probably could answer best, right? Jason, with that big camera, you have 64 gigabytes of space. Yeah. Have you guys filled up the card? Uh, yeah. So and we just back it up and delete all of them. Yeah. So th that's a scary thing, right? Because if you're expected to have an SD card and you need to transfer those files, you almost have to transfer the files put it on several different computers, and then put it up to your video storage site. Um, and it takes a long time to transfer, right? Elaine, did it take a long time transferring from the big camera to your computer? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, like how long would it take for one of your film shoots to upload that video footage? Um, 30 minutes. 10 minutes, I guess. 10 minutes? Okay. Other questions? In the teaser, you heard a heartbeat each time the lights went out. Yeah. For that teaser, and we're planning on adding more like, footsteps. And, yeah. How do we do it? We can record our own footsteps, and we use the uh, in the closet back there behind Jason. There's a little sound studio that we have. We just record in there as well. It's silent.
The one thing that I, a lot of you were unaware of, um, especially the students in Mr. DL's class, on Friday when it was a PD day, I believe there's around at least 20, maybe even more students in here almost the entire day just working on projects. And the amount of time that's going in after school as well, like how many days have you been here after school? Oh yeah. Working yeah. on something. Yeah, with, with, <laughs> with these guys in the theater, yeah, yeah for yeah. hours after uh, after school, yeah. Even booking the theater, you have to actually fill out a form and get it approved by Ms. Silver and then Mr. Heshka to get that all taken care of. Um, it's, it's quite amazing to see the dedication to, to create a film of your choice. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you can relate to, I know like Kenneth, you guys just said you're going to go to like different parking lots, right? And film in parking lots. But you have to be very careful when you're out and filming, right? Because if somebody sees something and it looks inappropriate, guess what the first thing they're going to do? Call the police, right? You have to be extremely careful. And make sure that it looks like a film group. Um, other questions? How long did it take you to make some of the folders? How long did it take you to make some of the folders? Not that long. We haven't done that much right now because we didn't get the video yet. But as soon as we get the video, we're going to start like using the video to synchronize the audio as well with the video. So we'll start, so. The one thing, Nick, can you just? You and Jason talk about the other audio component you guys are working on. Like the music? Yeah. The music? Yeah, the music. Uh, I have done two of them. So. <laughs> I'm done two, so I'm still waiting for the other song. So you've done two? Yeah. Two what do you songs. mean by done two? Two songs already for... So you've created, you've composed two different songs? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so not downloading royalty-free music, he's actually composed music. Using which program? Um, audio Tools and Stun Nation. Stun Nation. Well. Yeah. So you, what you see here is you actually have a, a really dynamic group of people doing different things to make this project work. And the fact that you guys are working on making your own music, that just makes the film that much more better, right? Because it's 100% it's student made, which is kind of neat to see. Um, the website, like Sarah, have you ever taken a web class before? No? And then you started working on the website around, what, three weeks ago? Yeah, and it's come a long way. And you're using Wix, which is pretty user friendly. And I know that we sat down and we were looking at it. Um, can you just talk about a few things that you've done on your website, which transformed your site? Um, well, to get the look for a website, I looked, I checked out like other forum websites that are up there, and I got some ideas. And I just took the colors from. Any other questions? Overall, I think it's just been absolutely fantastic. Just like being a teacher and watching this for the first time, this has been really uh, rewarding. And, and I'm hoping as groups right now, you're not just sitting back and you're watching these presentations. You're taking note of things that are working really well in other group projects. And if you have questions, you sort of seeing the roles of different people. Like, so let's just say that Arsh is doing the website for his group. Like, you may want to talk to Sarah to see what she's gone through, right? Not just going through the criteria, but getting some feedback. Okay. Right. Look at things that, like, one thing I like a lot about your presentation: all those photos of you guys behind the scenes. You're like day one, day two, day three. It makes it look like you guys are working a lot on this project. I know last week you said that you hated the way that it looked, right? The final movie's not coming together the way you want it to come together. But at least you've changed the ending. And that does happen. Like most film companies will come up with two or three different endings. And then they'll actually show it to movie or to audiences and have them vote on the best one. Yeah, sorry, question. Um, when you guys went into like problems with so you guys changed the ending, right? How do you guys like get a new idea without taking it from something else? Like, how do you come up with everything? How do you guys brainstorm? <laughs> <laughs> so, the new ending, it actually came, like, I just had this idea pop into my head while we were in the car. So I, like, pitched it to Matt and Sarah, and then they came up with the idea. 
Yeah, they seem to like it. And then we talked to everyone. Just to clarify, Kaylin's actually in two, well, Jerk Jar, right? And she's been like the, she was the first person to be killed off in, in the movie. <laughs> yeah. But she's actually taken a role in the production of this group as well. So that's, it's kind of neat. To, and Gerard, you've been doing the same thing. You've been jumping back and forth between groups because you have different skills. And, and I commend you for that. That's, that's fantastic being able to work on stuff like that. Going, going off of what Liam said, just about the creative process, and what it's actually like when you're making, you know, setting up your scenes and all that stuff. Can anyone talk about uh, the decisions you make for doing different camera angles and things like that and how that ties into the story? Was that all done in the storyboarding process? How much was done on the fly? Uh, So doing a lot of research is really important. Research and reference, right? And how many films do you think you've looked at as a group before actually creating your story? Anyone else? How do you know when you add more to the shot or to the video or like that? Like for example, if you were to add foliard, how do you know when to add it? Actually, I have problems with the music. Or do you just want to know that that scene or anything? We have a script which had like a descriptions of what happened, so I highlighted some points where I considered fully or should be added, like footsteps or the sword slashing sound that you heard in the teaser as well. How was the teaser? The trailer. The trailer. Oh, it was the movie, okay. <laughs> Sorry, in the movie. So we have some ideas planned out before, and then when we look at it again, we'll see what else needs to be added fully or So, uh, Nick, then you're talking about when you're writing your screenplay, if there's something that's really important to the scene, some kind of a sound, if it's, let's say, when they're underneath in the basement there and they're walking around, you can hear the, the gravel underneath the footsteps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you really want that to be a feature of the shot, then you'll include it in your screenplay. Mm -hmm. And everything else you leave out and kind of do after the fact when you can't hear <coughs> footsteps and you decide you need to add them in. So you're, you're creating a soundscape, right? You're basically yeah. create. you have to look at everything in that room and you want to create a little bit of sound with it, right? I think I'm doing like everything at once instead of just focusing on like one thing. Mm -hmm. But doing everything at once and just like amplifying it later, mm -hmm. trying to make it stand out more. I was trying to like play and the music, hear the music but the background. Other questions? 
Well, you know what? Well done. We have uh, 23 minutes left, so you guys can get continue working on your project. Just a reminder again, tomorrow, Carly Schuler, app designer, going to come in and she's going to...